Hey guys, Wave618 here. It is the 11th of May and a hugely anticipated event, that is the halving of Bitcoin, has arrived. Obviously, from a fundamental point of view, having a very bullish uh, perspective on Bitcoin. But that said, we need to determine now from a technical analysis, technical analysis point of view, how this can be assessed. Has it already been priced in to the charts? Or can we expect a, a long trend to the upside from here onwards? These are the main things that we need to discuss in today's video. I'm going to also touch on a fractal that we seem to be playing out that seems absolutely identical to a pattern seen in 2015-2016. Literally, for the last couple of years, it has been playing it out absolutely perfectly. And it ties in with the bullish significance of this halving. So this is what I want to address in today's video. So if interested, then stay tuned. Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. So uh, yeah, I thought we'd do another update in Bitcoin today just because obviously there's a lot of hype around the halving and everyone wants to know exactly how it's going to impact on price in Bitcoin. I don't usually do this frequent Bitcoin updates because obviously I reserve the more frequent updates for the group. Um, but yeah, it's a very important time. So I thought we'd do a public update here on YouTube. Uh, but that said, just before we head on into the video, every so often, as you know, I do a deal for the discounts on my cryptology service. So if you are interested in that, we're gonna do the 50% discount on the first month just to get a taster of cryptology. Just a reminder of those who are new to the channel, you can find it here at wave618.com. Links to this are in the description of the video, as well as the discount link that I'll put there. Also, if you come down, you can see the cryptology service, which is here. And going in here, you can basically find out exactly what's involved in this service. Basically, I cover on a weekly, basis a very detailed video on bitcoin all of my views on bitcoin as well as the top 15 market caps uh, you get full access to my full educational course uh, with, while subscribed obviously and those modules are released gradually over three months and you get access to the discord community and when i see other good opportunities across the markets because i like to cover other markets apart from crypto i'll also cover those in the discord also all right, so yeah, if interested in that, check it out. Check out the link in the description. But over to Bitcoin. So first things first, um, let's talk about this fractal that I've been speaking about. Now, I did touch on this. I think it was in the Digibyte video I did uh, just prior to this one. And um, it's the major triangle. And this triangle was actually something that I'd been looking at for a long time. And I was actually put off it for a brief while. Um, largely because of the volume profile of the triangle all right so let's just pull up that uh play out first of all so basically how i'm looking at this i'm looking at it playing out as an a b c d and e playouts so that's the triangle okay basically what i'm saying is we're playing out the d wave right now of which we've made the first leg up in the d yeah i expect us now to come down quite dramatically to be honest and we'll talk about how far shortly but then I think we're going to push higher to, to finish the D at around 11,700 approximately. After which, I'm then looking for the E wave, which may be pretty shallow, to be honest. And the reason this is very important is because any pullback here could be the lowest price that we see in Bitcoin for a very, very long time. Because even though it might not be the end of the triangle when we come down for this second wave of the D wave up to here, it could still be the lowest price that we see in the sense that we push up to D. And as I say, I anticipate E wave only being shallow and certainly not coming down as far as this wave down that we are likely to play out very, very shortly. Now, I do think it could come pretty deep, this uh, this move down. And I do think it's going to shake a lot of people out. People are going to turn very bearish on Bitcoin once they see this move happening. But I'm hoping that once you've seen this video, you will be more prepared for this scenario maybe not get shaken out. I'll show my invalidation points for this as well. But uh, yeah, let me just explain why I've gone with this sequence. So first of all, this triangle is something I've been talking about for a very, very long time. All right. Just to illustrate that, 
uh, if we go to my videos here on YouTube, I want to show you, first of all, um, first of all, on the subject of the market crash, which we all think may be happening soon, especially with the lockdown and the coronavirus that's happening right now. I spoke about how this was July 2018, I believe it was, so almost two years ago. I spoke about how a market crash would probably lead to money flooding into Bitcoin or crypto in general. Yeah, I got a lot of hate for this video at the time. You know, not a lot of hate, but a lot of people questioning at the time saying, you know, when people are risk off, they're risk off and no asset can possibly do well. Well, now everyone seems to have changed their view and are now seeing it like me as a hedge against the financial system. So just want to show you my basic narrative has been that money is going to flood into Bitcoin. And that is why it's been an asset that I've been following so closely because I've got a lot of confidence in the market. Now, I also spoke about the most important line in crypto history, and I still stand by this. This was back in July, sorry, August 2018. Yeah, basically, this was created using a pitchfork. Check out this video. It's very interesting. It is how I predicted the 3.2K bottom, which has held as a bottom. Um, and yeah, admittedly, I was thinking that bottom was the end of this major fourth wave that we're in right now. However, I've adapted my count now, and now I'm looking at this major triangle play out. Uh, scrolling up, another important video to look at is this long-term target. You can see it's a very large number here, 350k. I've explained the reason for that target, but again, it's highlighting how this was again over a year ago that I've been looking for a big breakout. Yeah, uh, as I say at the time, I was looking at this being uh, a 3.2k bottom, and then that was the end of the fourth wave. But we had a corrective looking move up, which again, everyone said it looks impulsive. But as I say, it looked very corrective to me. And that's why I changed my count to the large triangle. All right. So as I say, been looking at this for a very, very long time. I did get phased out of the triangle at one point. I'll explain why. It was due to the volume profile on this C wave. But we'll go into that in a moment. First of all, let's just break down this triangle. So... Basically, I've got this as a, I had it as a WXY coming down. So that's our first wave. Then we've got a descending triangle. So it's an A, B, C, D, and E. And then we come down here to have our final three waves moved down, where Y is a 0 0.382 extension of wave W. Okay. Then we go up, and everyone was looking at this as impulsive. Why? Because it went up in a very fast move. Okay. But I explained to everyone the speed of a move does not necessarily mean that it is impulsive. And that's where Elliott Wave comes in and it's very, very useful. And I found there was a very nice Elliott Wave count that supported this as being corrective in nature. All right. And I had it as this was the impulse here, small impulse. And then you get a ascending triangle, which was made of an A, B, C, D and E. Hard to see on this time frame. But then we go into the C wave, which is very extended relative to A. And C was a 4.236 extension of A. Absolutely perfect Fibonacci relationship. Okay, obviously looking very extended, but you can get these extended ABCs. All right. Then obviously we've gone into this move down here. We've got a first wave, second wave, third wave. Again, a three wavish move down, supporting that of a triangle. Then I've been looking at this move up. Everyone got very excited, thinking it's we're going impulsive, going parabolic up to this point. And uh, yeah, I maintained the whole count. If we go in on the four hourly here, it was looking so corrective. And I, I was maintaining that this is definitely corrective. I actually thought we'd roll, it, roll over at 7,700. Then I was thinking 9.2K, and I'll explain why I thought these levels in a moment. And But we kept on pushing, pushing through these resistance levels until we met that final resistance at 10K. Then we started to push down, all right? But throughout this, I've maintained that this has been corrective and it isn't the major breakout all right um so that is basically how i'm looking at it so i think this is not the end of d people are thinking it's the end of d i don't think that i think it's been way too brief yeah i think we come down bit of a shake out first get everyone bearish again then we push up and then we make the e shallow e wave before pushing up even higher all right now very importantly i want to show you this fractal that i was talking about and i did address it briefly in my last digibyte video but basically here it is from looking back this is 2015 spanning to 2016 also and it's the same kind of triangle basically you can see here i've said we are here this is basically where we hit 10k and then found a bit of resistance okay so basically we've come down 
first aggressive move down and then you can see this coming down here you'll have to zoom in and check it out for yourself but it comes down in a descending triangle just like i explained that we've seen here this descending triangle and then we come down admittedly this does go a bit more sideways than this does yeah it takes a longer period of time for the a wave to materialize but then check out the next move so we get this initial impulse price goes sideways for a good amount of time looks very uncharacteristic for a wave two and then we get this aggressive impulse to the upside basically what we had here impulse sideways price action not looking like a wave two because it's a b wave instead then we get our aggressive impulse okay so again a lot of similarities playing out here then what do we get we get this uh, overlapping price action coming down to here we then come up and we look like we're going to make new highs above here and then all of a sudden we roll over and collapse very hard okay again coming down corrective manner and then all of a sudden we start pumping and again it looks like it wants to go up higher but all of a sudden it rolls over and collapses very hard and you can see here you do actually get a spike in volume yeah so here on the c you get a spike in volume which is actually higher than the volume for the b wave so that is very unusual for a triangle usually you get a descending profile in the volume throughout the whole pattern and that is what threw me off this triangle in the first instance and i was actually holding on to the whole triangle idea up until around i think it's around this point here or maybe even here um but yeah, it was, this, it was the volume spike. So it must have been here, actually. Uh, that When the volume came in, that is when I lost faith in the triangle. But looking back, we have seen this same play out, play out back in 2016, where we actually had this spike in volume on the C wave. Now, whether you want to call it a triangle or not, it's triangular. Yeah. If you don't want to call it a triangle, fine. You can call it some kind of, uh, this is maybe the end of the correction. And then we go into an impulse starting from here. And then this is a correction and then we go into a new impulse from there either way this is a contracting play out you've got highs which are you know lower highs and higher lows in a contracting play out and this is exactly what i think is playing out here yeah so as i say it's all played out very 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 similarly again the first wave of d yeah came up three legs first leg sideways up and you can see how aggressive that move up was yeah that is basically that parabolic move up that we had just recently up to 10k first wave sideways second wave and then third wave aggressively to the upside so absolutely playing out perfectly all right now i see us playing out this deep correction really coming down almost correcting the whole of this uh to the, the bottom of the c wave here yeah that is what i'm expecting to play out right now so let's have a little zoom in here and um yeah let's talk about some key levels first of all i want to pull on these key boxes that i always talk about with my group so on the monthly time frame just showing you the significance of these levels so basically how are these boxes drawn very very simply monthly time frame so i go on the highest time frame that i see basically we get a series of red candles coming down obviously in a bear, bear move and then every so often you'll get a green candle i like to look for these green candles in isolation ideally so here you can see one two and three and these boxes are basically marking out the open and close of these candles and you'll find that obviously any green candle in a bear trend is consolidation it's where the market is just halting and consolidating preparing for its next move down and you'll find that the open and close for this range is very very significant for future price that these levels are often considered levels of value because that's where price moves it moves from value to value and shoots very quickly between these levels so where you find consolidation is where you find levels of value hence it's why you find support and resistance going forward into the future yeah and you just have to look at this uh, and you'll see how well these levels act to support and resistance going forward. All right. Now, let's just go in on the daily, keeping these boxes on the chart. And this will explain why I was initially looking at 7700 as resistance. Yeah, it was at this point. But then what happened? Did we see a big rebound? No, we consolidated underneath it. It was forming almost like an ascending triangle. Eventually broke it, used it as support, shot up straight to the next order block. Yeah. Again, rather than having a big rebound to the downside, it consolidated under here, test it first time, second time, third time, and then eventually broke it to the upside. And it was at that point I was then looking at this final block above to act as resistance. 
Yeah, this was around 10K, all the way up to 10.3K. That's where I was happy for it to come up to. But in fact, the thing that actually acted as resistance was this uh, Fib. Yeah, so we need to go on the linear scale to look at Fib retracements. And basically, as you know, I was, so we start at the um, beginning of the C wave, which is here, end of the C wave, which is here, draw our Fib retracement, and we hit the 0.618 absolutely perfectly. This is exactly what happened with the first leg of the D wave back in 2016. It then came down and went up to the 0.786, which as I say is 11,700, and that's where I expect the D wave to come up to. Then I expect a shallow retracement for the E wave, probably to around this level of 8,700, which is roughly where the 50 week simple moving average is. So I expect a retest of that before us then pushing higher, yeah? But the point is, with this move coming down, I expect it to come down in a three-legged move. So we'll have our first sharpish move down, could come down perhaps as far as around 6,900, have a bounce, and then I anticipate probably coming down to around 5,200 is where I think it could come down to. At that point, let's go on the log scale. At that point, a lot of people understandably are going to turn bearish and the reason is everyone looks at back at this yeah everyone looks at this consolidation here and uses that as a point of reference as long as we're above it everyone's happy that we're bullish as long as we're beneath it everyone's very bearish that's generally how the, the every every technical analysis trader is looking at bitcoin right now and i think that's going to be the ultimate shakeout price just coming under here just on a wick maybe on a weekly wick and then shooting back up probably a closing candle above this block here at around 6400 yeah but this is the play out that i'm looking at um <clears throat> i do not think now because of this aggressive move up i was previously considering the possibility of bitcoin coming down to 1.3k that's not off the table it's certainly possible but not probable in my opinion okay this is this count is certainly the most high probability count that i have so um, yeah, obviously invalidation point is coming beneath this level here at 3800. So that's where we get our invalidation. But I can't see it happening. As I say, 5200 I think will act as strong support. Yeah. Um, and alternatively, if this is just going to go rip roar into the upside, then getting above, well, obviously taking out this high is the key level to overcome, which is at 14,000. But getting above this block here at 10,300, that is where I would lose my bearish bias short term. And certainly I'd be expecting a, an aggressive move short term to the upside. But I don't see it happening. As I say, we found that rejection at the 0.618 Fib on the linear scale of this move down for the C wave. And that's held very, very well, just like it did in 2016. Um, so what else do we need to discuss? So let's just take off these blocks because I've explained the significance of those. Let's take off this Fib. Uh, uh, 50 week simple moving average. I keep talking about it again and again. Let's just briefly address it because it's acted as a wonderful magnet for price for the closing price on the weekly time frame. Uh, let's just take a look. And so it's the blue line here on our chart. So let's take off the 200 also, though obviously the 200 week has been very significant, but let's just take off everything but the 50 because that's the important one right now. And I highlighted time and time again how when price tests this level of the 50 weeks simple moving average, it either bounces off it straight away or shoots straight through it. So as you can see here, you know, add to the temporary support, shot straight through, and as a result, we go into a trend. Here, rejected. Next time it goes through, it shoots through it, then acts as the start of a new major trend. And again, respected it well initially, then we go through using it again, respected very well as resistance, shoot down. And then obviously shot through it and now, now it's losing its significance. So I was worried about price coming down here and disrespecting the 50 week simple moving average. As a result, once we went up, you can see we shot through it dramatically and the same is happening now. Basically, I think we, although obviously it's looking like it's acted as uh, resistance here we haven't seen a major weekly close above it for me this is still acting it's been disrespected in my opinion yeah we've seen price shoot above it quite significantly as you can see in the past it touches the 50 week either on a wick or a close but never really goes above it significantly it's been disrespected now i think it we do see price get rejected here but next time it's going to come up and it's going to shoot through it 
Then, as I say, for the E-Wave, I think we retest the 50-week simple moving average and it acts as wonderful support taking price higher. Yeah, so I, obviously I'm looking about five or six steps ahead, which is never recommended in trading because obviously you've got to look at it one step at a time because it's technical analysis at the end of the day. We're looking at probabilities. Yeah, but this technical analysis, in my opinion, seems to tie in very well with the fundamentals right now. And the fundamentals being, obviously, we've got the halving. And for those of you that weren't aware of the halving or were living under a rock, whatever, basically, the halving basically means the reward on each Bitcoin that is mined is going to be halved. Yeah, so there's less incentive to mine Bitcoin. Obviously, that is going to lead to a, a drawback in the supply. Yeah, and naturally, as per you know economics, um, if you cut back your supply, it's going to be you know push prices up. Yeah, understandably, you've got more people fighting over a smaller or more scarce product. So um, yeah, so it's obviously a bullish outcome for the underlying asset, but that doesn't mean it has to shoot up as soon as it happens. As, as you can see, we've had a rally in price in anticipation of the halving, okay? So we've rallied up quite aggressively up to this point. And now I think, you know, we have a cool off, but ultimately this halving is significant. It's gonna have a long lasting effect. I think it could have an effect for the next one or two years. And it will have that bullish push factor. It will be supporting price. Um, so although obviously I'm seeing us roll over, ultimately long term, I think we're going into a bull market and that would fit in very nicely with the ABCDE. On top of that, obviously we're going into recession, undoubtedly. Now the stock markets may continue to go up, but uh, the business cycle is going into recession. There's no doubt about it. First quarter already confirmed has been a contractive quarter and pretty sure se uh, second quarter is going to follow suit and it's going to be even more dramatic and then you'll get your headlines end of June that the recession is confirmed um, but I still think stock markets could rally because there's a lot of incentive politically for the stock markets to do well after the election who knows what will happen maybe there's no reason for the stock markets to be pumped any further and as a result could turn to the downside but as I say the important thing here is that it seems like we're going into recession. As I say, I think that is going to lead to people looking for a safe haven. And as I did in that video two years ago, where I talked about a market crash would lead to a Bitcoin boom, that's still the narrative that I'm following. I uh, still think that's going to play out. And um, yeah, so there's, there's, there's all of these factors fundamentally looking positive for Bitcoin. Yeah, so you've got the halving. And then you've got, obviously, the, the economic turmoil that we're facing right now, or even the financial crisis. It could be a, a very concerning for the whole financial system, um, whereby I think Bitcoin could act as a very good alternative and a hedge against that. So, yeah, last technical analysis, bit of technical analysis I want to throw in is uh, Camarilla Pivots. So this is something that not many people talk about for some reason but they work incredibly well. So we're here on the weekly time frame. You can see how we came down to here, S4 acting as support. Then we run up and you see, never managed to get a close above the R4. We come down to the S3. I believe this now, in keeping with the triangle, is gonna act as significant support at S3. I don't think we come beneath this level. And I think probably, as I say, 5200 is where I'm looking for us to come down, act as that shakeout for anyone who's bullish. And uh, yeah, I think the S2 here is where we come down to. So again, another bit of confluence around that level. So we'll see how it plays out. As I say, it may not come down this far. This is where I'm anticipating it come, coming down to. Um, I think it'll be the ultimate shakeout, but could be more shallow, may come down just to the S1, for example, which would be the bottom of this range. So we'll see how it plays out. But yeah, th this is basically my outlook on Bitcoin. So very exciting times because as I say, this is going to materialize over the next few weeks, few months maybe, that we see price bottoming out here potentially for a very, very long time. As I say, 5200, if that gets tested uh, and if we're following this triangle, then it's th the lowest price you're going to see for an enormous amount of time. So I'm not a financial advisor. I'm not going to tell you to stick all your money on Bitcoin once we see that level hit. 
it, you're entirely entitled to do your own due diligence and make your own decisions and take responsibility for your actions. But these are my thoughts. I've explained them in detail. You may completely disagree with them, uh, but these are all my thoughts and I've put my argument forward here. Uh, and yeah, if you want regular updates and want in-depth analysis, want to see how this triangle plays out and with weekly updates and potentially going into a crazy bull trend potentially we'll have to see obviously we've still got to see these waves play out but yeah i'll be doing the regular updates in cryptology that's where it'll be happening and as i say that discount for the first month is available in the description to this video if interested so check it out if you if you're interested in that but yeah i think we'll wrap it up there guys if you found value in this content please leave a like and um yeah any queries as always pop them down in the comments and yeah if you're not subscribed please subscribe to the channel all right, going to wrap it up there, guys. Take care.